Hello everyone, my name is Fatima Rahman and I'm a lecturer here at UNF in the biology department. I teach Gen Bio 1 labs and molecular and cellular biology labs and lecture. And today I'm going to be telling you about the research that we do in my research lab here. Um, and the research that I will be talking about today is exploring the anti-cancer properties of saffron, which is this Crocus sativus. It's the stamens of the plant right here of these flowers that are used as a spice um, in Middle Eastern and Chinese cooking um, in many Asian countries actually. It is also used in Oriental and Ayurvedic medicine as an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory product. But recently it has also been shown uh, to have anti-cancer properties and that's the one that I focus on in our lab. Um, the Ayurvedic medicine and the Oriental medicines that are produced by this product, using this product, are shown to have some effect for cardiovascular and cerebrovascular diseases, uh, so it's good for heart health. It is also used to boost immunity and also to control autoimmune diseases. And like I said, in recent times, we've also seen some anti-cancer activities as well. Now, the active compounds that have those anti-cancer activities are the crocin and crocetin. This is their structure, and they seem to inhibit the cancer cell proliferation. By that, I mean that they seem to slow down the growth. Um, and they also seem to be specific to cancer cells or abnormal cells rather than affecting normal cells, which is different than typical chemotherapy which is known to also affect normal cells and obviously cause a lot of side effects and issues. So when we talk about cancer cells, what is it that we're talking about? Well, specifically, cancer cells are cells of our own body gone rogue. So they no longer follow the general rules and guidelines associated with being cells, and they don't grow in a controlled manner like they're supposed to, and they don't die when they're supposed to die. So typically, cells are very controlled in when they grow, when they divide, when they replicate the DNA, and when they're too old and too damaged, they are killed away, and they are died off. However, in this case, they have mutations in their DNA, their actual genetic code, that now make them either insensitive to anti-growth signals, or they may have their own growth signals always being produced or always active, or they may have mutations in the pathways associated with program cell death that controls that death response um, when the cells are too damaged or too old to continue with their normal function. And because of that, these cells can now have limitless replicative potential. That means they can divide all the time, they can continue to survive and grow and do all the things they want to do. Now, when they become more aggressive and more advanced, they can then also produce factors, produce proteins that can signal the body's normal cells to grow blood vessels towards them. And also to allow the tissue, you know, allow the cells to become more invasive, more motile. So they can walk away and grow and replicate in other places, which is how you get invasive metastatic cancers, which obviously are super hard to treat. So uh, saffron as a drug product uh, is thought to work best at the cell cycle control pathway. So it is um, thought that it would most likely be causing cell cycle arrest in these abnormal cells so that they cannot be dividing all the time. We also think through our studies that they can also affect migration of cells and they can stop that from happening at the same level so they may actually inhibit the cells from going, the cancer cells from going to other places and growing more tumors and becoming metastatic cancers. And finally, we think that at certain concentration, saffron can actually kill cells too, so that it can cause these cells to undergo apoptosis or cell death through some other mechanism and thus have anti-cancer properties through that as well. So to study this, we use many different types of techniques, many different types of molecular, as well as cell biology techniques. Um, we used these 
cool Q-face time-lapse microscopy to examine ourselves, videotape them over days to see how they were changing in the presence of saffron. We then took our observations from there and expanded on them further through our other molecular studies. We also made slides of the cells after treating them with saffron or leaving them just untreated and looked at them under the microscope morphologically to see what they look like in a normal condition and then how do they change once saffron is added to them. We looked at the viability or survival of the cells by running crystal violet and pyfen blue assays to assess percent survival in the cells in the presence or absence of varying concentration of saffron. We also do colony formation assays, which is going one step further and saying, well, we know that it slows the growth and we know that it seems to kill them, but does it actually help the tumors be less aggressive? So does it actually prevent tumors from forming, either the new ones or the same ones from getting bigger? And we do that with a special assay called colony formation assay. Then we also run, look at the invasiveness of the cancer. And we do that by these two cool methods. In the first one, it is called void and chamber assay. We add the cells on the top chamber along with the presence or absence of different concentrations of saffron. And then at the bottom, we just have normal media. And if cells are able to migrate to the other side of this little insert, then they are considered migratory cells. They, stay, they are considered able to move. Um, and in the presence of, abs or of uh, saffron, we expect them to be less invasive, so less of them can move. And then finally, we do another assay for migration, which is called wound hanging assay. In this case, we basically grow the cells so they are fully covering the space, and then we make a cut by taking away cells in the middle. And then we watch them fill that gap. So it's like making a cut on your skin and then watching it heal. And then we see how fast they can do that, how well they can do that. And in the presence of saffron, we expect them to be less able to do that. So I'm not going to show you a lot of actual data except for a couple of things. So here is a cool microscopy video that we have from that Q-face microscope. And here you have MDA-468 breast cancer cells. So when you look at them, you see that there are two population of cells at any given time. You have cells that are pretty much stationary. They are stuck, they're flat to the surface of the plate. And then you have cells that have these projections and they seem to be moving quite a bit. Now that subset of cell in that culture is what we would call invasive or highly motile cells. And so you can watch that happening, looking at them over time you see they are becoming longer and shorter as they move across. Now all these cells are treated with saffron. You see how the cell is just kind of crawling away? Now look at them towards the end of that 12 hour time frame. All those projections are almost gone. And in their place, these cells have become shrunken down and smaller. So saffron seems to affect these highly motile cells specifically and make them smaller and make them less invasive and make them less able to move so that they are no longer as motile as they used to be. They are more, they are still moving, but not at the same rate. They've definitely slowed down. So we have looked at that in great detail quantitatively as well and through those other mechanisms. And we have found that that's indeed the case, that saffron can actually inhibit the cells from moving around and moving to other places to cause metastasis. Now, using all the known knowledge that we have in from our own studies and for published studies, we looked at this other program called Reacto, and a student of ours, two students of mine actually, uh, worked with Reacto pathway analysis to see what specific areas of our genome seems to be affected by saffron. And it seems to be there are three main areas that pop up the immune system, cell cycle, and program cell death. So that definitely goes along with our story that we think that saffron is going to affect the cell cycle to slow it down, somehow affect this program cell death cycle to increase de death rate, 
and then somehow affects the immune system since it's a known anti-inflammatory that is expected so before um i'm not without giving you any more information or data to confuse you from our assay i'm going to actually show you a little video of my current students in the lab this is chanel and hunter and they will tell you a little bit of what they think they do in the lab all day long. Hi, I'm Hunter, and we here in the research department are poor. As you can see, we can't even afford to love. <laughs> so as much as we'd like to do our jobs with cancer cells, half the time it ends up with infection. Oh, no. Like this sweet, sweet mold. As much as you want to grow cancer cells, at the end of the day, you get mold. It's because we can't afford to do our aseptic technique properly. Which my lab partner is now going to demonstrate. Nice. So, we have your designated area. It's more a parody of what happens in my lab than real lab activities. But I guess that's what they thought would be fun to show you. Anything you want to add to that, Hunter? I am the master of contaminating cells. Oh, he is. Yep. What about you? That's surprising. What about you? Able to get data. <laughs> what are you good at? Uh, helping and contaminating cells. <laughs> okay, so when you guys are not contaminating cells, what are you actually trying to do? How about We're that? We're actually trying to uh, do protein quantification. Cell cycle analysis. Cell cycle analysis. What are you trying to find with that? We are trying to find uh, which enzymes are getting activated via saffron at their time intervals, whether it's 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, or even 12 hour time interval, and then seeing which treatment has the most present so we can quantify which treatment dosage is working best at certain time intervals. Okay. So are you only using saffron? your drug treatments or something else? Uh, currently we're only using saffron, but uh, two cell lines are using our MDA 468, which is red cancer cell line, and HCT 116, negative and positive, with varying THC free genes, which are colon cancer cell lines. Okay. Sounds good. Do you like working here? Yes. Okay. It's, it's better than prison. <laughs>